When I was recently visiting a museum in Amsterdam, the Stedelijk Museum, which has a lot of old modern art, I went to their bookshop and interestingly that museum, by the way, is located in a building that resembles uh, a sort of giant bathtub. But I went to the bookshop there, which is actually pretty good and they have a whole bunch of books. A lot of them being from a from a publishing house I love a lot. Tasken, uh, Tasken, Tasken, who make these big books. And I found a book there that really interested me, but I didn't buy it in the shop. And then when I got home, I was disappointed in myself that I didn't buy the book. So of course, this being 2023, I went ahead and ordered the book. And now I want to show it to you. Then, uh, take a look at it and see if it's interesting because I think if you're a retro computer enthusiast like me this book will be pretty much up to the alley and it's very big and heavy I like how there's Zero packing material to protect it during shipping. Even better is that the, the shipping company, who shall not be named, left it outside in the rain. So here it is, The Computer. A history from the 17th century to today by Tosken. And this is from Jens Müller and Julius Wiedemann. Piedemann. I would say they are probably from Germany looking at those names so on the front we have an iPod some video call thing is this a pong de pong arcade cabinet I would say some very interesting looking reel to reel equipment we have of course a three and a half inch floppy disk and I think this is HAL from, from uh, 2001, A Space Time Odyssey. Thomas Watson Jr. Mainframe, something 64, Tron. We'll have to look what that is. And another sort of mainframe type device. It's gonna be a challenge to find what is the best way to look at this book but we'll just take a couple minutes to skip through it and just enjoy these artworks so this is Colossus and that of course was designed for cracking the Enigma code by Alan Turing if you would have shown me this picture like now without any context I don't think I would have said that this is Colossus the computer that cracked Enigma because it looks much more modern. Small scale experimental machine SSEM Manchester Baby. First operational machine using the von Neumann architecture concept of an electronic stored program computer. Its successor, the Mark I, was the first universal computer on the market. Interesting. Uniservo 1. Built by Remington Rand, the Uniservo 1 was the first external tape drive for the company's first commercial computers. It used half inch white metal tapes to read or write data. That's interesting. I think what I like most about this book is that they treat these computers and these devices as art, and it's interesting because. Some people ask me, like, why do you have all those old computers and, and what do you like about them and why do you even have some that don't work? And that's just because I find the form factor and the design of all these old retro devices sort of art-like and I can appreciate looking at them over using them. This is a Bendix G15 and I think that might be mistaken. Is this a computer that is on the Usagi Electronics? So this is what the book 
will hold. So we have the beginnings, 1944, the mainframe age. I think I'm the most interested in that. I would love to have a mainframe. I have a sort of mainframe, but it's a very tiny mainframe. The personal computer age, the internet age, and the all digital age. I think we'll be most interested in this because, of course, physical media. But let's just skip through some pages and look at the art. And I gotta say that now that I've seen, I think, six or seven pages, I'm already like really happy that I got this book because this is just so pretty. This is the IBM 729, also a magnetic tape device and what what that's yeah, incredible IBM design anyways has always been beautiful I think that then it's interesting to see that they use so much sort of IBM design in that new show from Apple TV plus severance it's, it's very nice PDP one oh my god I've never seen a monitor like that I think this is page space age type stuff. The computer built by a digital equipment corporation became famous for its role in the creation of hacker culture and MIT and other institutions. The first displayed based display based video game Space War was developed for it in 1962. Well, I can imagine that playing a game on this type of monitor in editing I'll zoom in on it. It's very interesting. I love those switches and these colors. I wonder how they made these pictures look so good. If it's if it's the actual devices from back then, or if it's or if it's like a renderings. Because in, in essence, I think this is not a book you. I think it's like six kilograms. It's not a book you'll read before bed. Sage operators console for the U.S. Air Force. Apple One, always nice to see. Nintendo Power Glove. Apple iMac. It's interesting how, how much you see those related to old computing. IBM 1130, the least expensive computer at the time. And of course, I'll try not to show everything, but it's difficult because it's also interesting. ZX Spectrum, IBM packaging, which in my opinion is always the best packaging, After Dark, like I said, HAL, which is on the side. Oh, this is nice, since I got into phones and I have a sort of similar device I want to show. Hypercard, yeah, I still have to. When I was, it's interesting because when I was in the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, they were having an actual art piece which was an old Apple CRT displaying hypercard images. The ICL 7500. The ICL 7500 was one of the first user oriented computers with a keyboard and a centered monitor of the size that became common later. This is a personal computer. Love the base, but I don't think it's part of it. Uh, this book, uh, I think it's from 2023, I should look it up, it's pretty new, I remember thinking how have I not seen this before, is, is there any information, maybe they signed the preface, no. we'll look in the back in a minute to see what from what time it was, computer space, yeah, Oh, nice! So they had the yellow for the for the pawn, green for a computer space device. Ah, I love a good pocket computer. This is a Casio PB770. Yeah, the zero to auto. I think I saw one for sale on like the Dutch version of eBay a while back. But those are uh, art pieces, and of course an altar. 8800. Still want to find a modern day version of Prevo. Of course, I would love to have an original one. Although 
I'm sort of in a conundrum because I think maybe it should go to someone who immediately understands how it works. But I would love to have a sort of replica of an Altair 8800 to, to find out how it works. That is an interesting keyboard. There's a, a, I know all these names, not the full backstory of the people, but there's a, like I said, QI, which is a, a lovely show. There's a computer episode. You should watch all episodes, in my opinion, but there's a really good computer episode. The punch cards. Oh, I could use that information. Because I still want to do a video on punch cards. Maybe I got a very big stack of punch cards, but of course that's for another day. Yeah, teletypes of some sort or calculators. Early computer room. So I'll s skip over some parts if you want to take a look at the book yourself. International business machines, yes, of course, IBM Think from there, which also become their ThinkPad. Birth of Silicon Valley. Yeah, this is also very cool. An Enigma machine. I think this is related to the Apollo program, where the movie Hidden Figures was based on. A Curta calculator. Uh, a giant room. The Mark I and its prototypical setup of a room filling mainframe computer mainframe edge. I think this is related to the CRT. <laughs> Do we see Mr. Farnsworth? Where? Hi robot Isaac Asimov. Yo, robot. <laughs> Yo. But this explains uh, the standard architecture of a 1960s mainframe computer, which I think is interesting. So this is the power supply units, the input-output units, main store units, main control units, Online magnetic tape units, offline magnetic tape units, printer control units, offline printer, tape, paper tape reader, paper tape punch, control desk and monitor printer. So this is in essence its display almost, you could say. Additional online magnetic tape units, arithmic units. Similar device like this that I really should give a try. It's really heavy and buried under other stuff. Oh, this is a brochure by NEC because Japan was leading the world in innovation in the 60s. Oh. That is interesting. The world's first public surveillance camera was installed near Hyde Park, London, 1968. And I think it's this. It's always interesting the monitors they use with the Apple II, the small sort of CCTV style type monitors, of course. That was also the display people used to use with uh, with the app one. It's 
SCSI standard. Interesting. I'm still looking for information on not SCSI standard, but SASI standard, which is, I think, the pre predecessor to uh, the predecessor to SCSI. But I cannot find any information on it. But it would be nice if I could find some information on SASI instead of SCSI. Yeah, that's what I thought. This book is from 2023. It's relatively new. That's why I was surprised to see it. Anyways, it's a ginormous book. Not sure if it comes across, but for reference, this is a five and a quarter inch floppy. So I think it's about six of those. It's very heavy slight issue with these books is always that they have a tendency that if you read them they sort of self-destruct because they're just they sort of self-destruct because they're too big for their size but if you're a, a, a very big retro computer enthusiast this must be the book for you because it's just pure art that was just a quick look at a book. Wow, that sounds exciting. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Bye.